opening. This is, uh, this is when we want to get up first thing when we assemble. We want to be stirred, kind of have our minds now uh, brought to a focus on our, on our day. Uh, it's, uh, we start with a song, and then we, we have a word. Uh, it's customary to get up and have a word from God. I, uh, I want to share with you a, a, a verse that ministered to me all week. I picked up on it uh, first of the week, and I was able to carry it with, us, with me throughout the week and, and, thought, and think on it. And it's, um, it's in one of the Gospels. And Jesus returned in, in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout uh, the region and round about. Amen. Uh, Luke 4.14. That's a powerful chapter. There's a lot of things in that chapter there. Uh, it says Jesus returned, and he returned with power. And we question, where did Jesus return from? Where had Jesus been? Well, we know at least for 40 days and 40 nights he had been in the wilderness. For it says in Mark, after Jesus had, was baptized of John, the Spirit immediately drove him and cast him into the wilderness. And we know that it's there that Satan had confronted Jesus and tempted him. We want to notice that in the very first of the uh, chapter, though, it says that when Jesus left the Jordan afterwards, after the baptism, he went into the wilderness. He was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Luke 4, verse 3. Uh, Jesus went into the wilderness and had went in there full of the Holy Ghost. And he returned. He left from there in the power of the Spirit. And uh, that ministered to me all week. Actually, I don't believe there was a time when Jesus really didn't have any power. You know, uh, we know that uh, he had power with men at a very young age. He was in the temple at the uh, age of 12, and he was able to ask questions, answer questions with the uh, teachers of the law. He had the power to live a sinless life all through his uh, early childhood years, obedient child, uh, teenage years, and his adult, young, uh, young adult life. He was always... Uh, mindful of the will of the Father. But our verse this morning is a little bit of a commentary uh, provided by the Spirit. Otherwise, we wouldn't know this particular detail about that Jesus is making it. He's left. He's, it's important. He's he, just a transition, transitionary comment. And, uh, and it, it makes the same comment again later in the chapter in verse 37. Same thing. And so, but it's important uh, I think uh, it's an important point that the Spirit is making here, particularly since it's a, a concluding remarks to the temptations in the wilderness. See, so how he fared in that, in that situation. See, so Jesus was given a circumstance, and, we, and we're going to see how he done. Uh, it's an introduction, too, of the next, three, uh, next few years of Jesus, three and a half years. It's an introduction uh, that will lead up to his uh, death, resurrection, and ascension. That Jesus returned from the wilderness, trials, and the power of the Spirit. Now, when Jesus was baptized uh, by John, the Spirit of God descended upon him as a dove, and, and the Father spoke out of heaven, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That same Spirit now, it, it descended on him. That's the Spirit that it drove Jesus into the wilderness to be personally tempted by Satan. And we know that uh, he was utterly defeated. Satan was utterly defeated. At the end of each temptation, uh, Satan received a no and a denial at the same time. So uh, Jesus leaves ex ex uh, the wilderness experience uh, with something that he did not have before. Uh, you have to be careful how you talk about the Lord in this way. But see, uh, all things belong to Jesus Christ, the man Jesus Christ. But here in the wilderness, see, he's taken hold of something that belonged to him. But he, he, he's actually entered into the work, and he's taken it. He lives it out, and he takes the victory that belongs to him. It's in his weakened state. Amen. Jesus was made strong in the power of the Spirit. And that's the way Jesus, I want to see, that's the way Jesus left the circumstance. He left there strong in the Spirit of God. We know that Jesus, from the beginning, as a child, he grew. He grew. He, uh, he grew, uh, and the scripture said, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. It's talking more about it. he grew physically. Uh, now, as, it, as far as it's concerned, his work on earth, this is the kind of victory Jesus needed to start with. Uh, Jesus personally needed to take this victory uh, right out from the outset. Uh, where is this prince of darkness anyway? You know, so he gives him a little taste 
of what uh, what lies up ahead is to set the tone, the proper tone for the upcoming years in this temptation trial and the victory over Satan. Jesus, uh, he needed this victory. You see, personally, heaven needed this victory, and and, and we needed we needed this we needed this victory in the temptation of uh, wilderness. Jesus gained, uh, he gained. And he was increased in this, in this temptation trial. And for us who would follow him, uh, he is our forerunner. He overcame for us, you see. The man Christ Jesus overcomes. He leaves that wilderness as an overcomer. His earthly ministry, of course, will all be about overcoming from here on out. He won't do anything but overcome. Jesus will he'll throw down every accusation, win every confrontation. He'll do it in the power of the Spirit. The demons, even in this very chapter, they'll say, we know who you are, and he will order them about. And he'll do it in the power of the, in the, power of the Spirit. The teachers of the law, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they'll be helpless as they oppose him. He walks about them in the power of the Spirit, unable to lay a hand on him. Even in this very chapter, he walked through their midst back in Nazareth. Jesus overcame temptation and sin. Finally, corruption and death. You see, he, he's, it's a... Uh, an introduction of what he'll be doing. And all those who follow after him will be known for overcoming too, just like this. For as he is, so are we in this world. And we'll do so in the power of the Spirit. We'll overcome. We can overcome temptation and sin right now. And then later on, we'll overcome, like Jesus, and corruption and death. The Spirit will also direct us, brethren, into areas of testing and trials like this. Uh, we'll experience the same things. And if we go into... If we go into these things full of the Holy Ghost, then we can emerge from them in the power of the Spirit, like Jesus did. Because Jesus did it, see? He was the first one. So that means we can do it too. He done it for us. All those who are connected to Him and, and live according to Him in His name, our lives can be characterized by overcoming. And the, and the world, uh, you know, says, uh, they'll tell you, they'll, don't be quick. Don't be too quick to, to bite off more than you can chew. You know, that's the device the world. Don't, don't, don't load your plate down with so much stuff to do, you know. They warn you against uh, being able uh, to, to take on too much. That's what the world says. But you can see in this kind of thinking, see, that uh, this is not the manner of the kingdom, is it? Amen. Uh, this is kind of foreign to the kingdom of God. When you, when you got that kind of thinking, you could, you, that comes from the world, you know. Because you don't, you don't have this kind of thing. Jesus went right into the wilderness, see. Yeah. And he put himself at a disadvantage, too. When, uh, when God puts us in a circumstance, when you've been thrust, and the word there is thrust, Jesus was thrust into the circumstance, you see. Uh, and uh, we, can, we can enter that circumstance full of the Holy Ghost, and we can overcome in the power of the Spirit. Uh, even though we may be uh, overwhelmed, feel like we're overwhelmed, at the time, but but uh, the Spirit will minister to us Amen. and 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 provide what we need. Need Amen. now, the wilderness temptation for Jesus was a special circumstance, brethren. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do what the, our Lord has done, mm -hmm. but uh, now, but we we get to participate in these kinds of things. Yeah. Paul called them sufferings, and uh, we have our God has prepared our own circumstance for which we'll enter into. Yeah. And many are common, common to us all, would experience a lot of the same things, but then there are some th things that are exclusive to us individually. So let us make ourselves ready. And uh, Jesus sought out John the Baptist. You know, Jesus had to find John the Baptist. Where is John the Baptist at today on the Jordan baptized? And he had to find him. Then he had to convince John, yeah, you, you need to go ahead and baptize me. See? So he, he did all those things in preparation for his ministry. You see, he, he, was, he done all he was, he took what was already provided, he had to take it and, and make it his own. And so, brethren, my encouragement this morning that you've showed up here, and that, that's a good start. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves ready, brethren, to, to enter these circumstances God's got for us. Amen. And so uh, we've got uh, a lesson this morning. Brother Ricky Sims, let's pray for him.